Hey guys, it's Jason with your Hopium Free Crypto Channel. So we've got a lot of big movers. We're going to cover Ethereum, one of our favorites on the channel. It found some resistance at its $3,500 level and now has blown through it and teetering on the edge of $4,000 US dollars. And I want to go through some tax NFT sort of space, just starting to bring that idea to the forefront and looking at it in terms of how we can best move forward in this world of digital currencies and taxes. So this is just some starting ideas that I wanna present in today's video. So something a little bit different. Now, if you like that or you enjoy it, you find some value from it, let me know. Hit the like button down below over here. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. Bell notification icon so you can continue to follow the journey. There are plenty of you who sort of see videos here and there and you're sort of missing bits and pieces about technical analysis and investing overall. So make sure you hit that bell notification icon so you can be updated when the videos come out. All right, let's dive in to the crypto news. Let's look at crypto market cap now at $2.45 trillion. Bitcoin still not at its all time high and we haven't reached our bullish level of 60,500. You know, I've mentioned that plenty of times before. That's my key level to show a sign of strength. And the weakness side that we've hit once is 54,000, a level below 54,000 US dollars. Plenty of reasons for that. I'll put those in those previous videos. Now, Ethereum's up 31% on the week, 10% on the day. This is looking very strong, very strong. And we've talked about it many times. I've explained why there was a very strong low at $2,050. Use that across other cryptocurrencies. It's same patterns and you just apply it to other cryptos as well. Dogecoin, negative 6%. This was around negative 9% when I was putting the information together for the video. And so I see it starting to build in anticipation of the Saturday Night Live skit. A uh, week, uh, uh, seven days in, 68% up. So we're just off the, the all time high at the moment. The high was around 75, 76 cents. Now we're at 65 cents. I'll show you a couple of levels that I've got my eye on now. Other piece to the video today are the legacy coins, which continue to do reasonably well, but I think they might just be bringing us to the end or at least showing us signs of something not 100% right with the market. I'm not calling an end, don't worry, but we just got to be aware of these signals. And if you want to call me out for FUD, by all means, that's your prerogative. But I want to take a few ideas in mind and that's how I piece it together. So if you don't want to hear my thoughts of how I'm piecing things together, there are other channels to watch, but this is how I do it. And I, I err on the side of caution, especially this late in the game. So I apologize if you're here late in the game, as in you're getting into the market in the last one to two months. Maybe we're coming to one section ending, but I think there's further to go, but we might have a longer period. I've said this multiple times, longer period on Bitcoin that we have a rest period, you know, maybe a few weeks or a few months where we don't pass the all time high. It's okay. The big thing here for Ethereum is we're getting close to 50% of Bitcoin's value. We're now at six and a half percent of the price of Bitcoin. And in terms of the market cap, we're at nearly 41% of Bitcoin's market cap. You know, if you've been watching the channel, I think that might be a narrative. I, I have a stronger feeling that that will be a narrative. Uh, pushed through if we see another bit of a blow off with Ethereum, we start to get to that 50% level, then I think people are going to start saying we might be able to flip Bitcoin this cycle. We've got a long way to go, probably another $550 billion on the market cap, a little more than that actually, about 650. But it's not impossible, especially with the, the rise in the meme coins that have gone absolutely nuts. And these actually have value to them. The greed is creeping up last few days, 67, 66, 70, and we're just starting to creep back into the extreme greed zone. Now, let's look at Bitcoin USD. Key level for bullish momentum. I'm waiting to see the 18th of April get broken, but as we continue to climb, it's just lowering volume. Doesn't mean we won't get there, but it's just something that I note when I'm doing my analysis. We have broken through the 50% and we are above the 50%, so that's a good sign. Obviously, I want to see some volume come back to the market. I want to see some stronger closes above previous highs. We continue to push above the high, this one here, pushed above, and then we close just on it. Not too bad. So I'm not as bearish thinking that I was, but I'm still happy to see that we move long, uh, sideways in this period between the lows of 47,000 and the top at around 45,000. So that's okay. This is all normal in a long-term 
bull market. We've gone up for 54 weeks. Should we get 10, 20 weeks sideways, 30 weeks sideways? I'm, I'm just pulling out numbers here, but about that 50% at least or m maximum of uh, the move up, which is 54 weeks. So, you know, 25-ish weeks, it's okay. No worries. That's a long time, right? I, I get that. But I'm just preparing myself because that's what I do with the analysis because a lot of people will just expect they buy something and they want it to go up the next hour. But if we're prepared and we're patient, that's when we can find these sort of buys and you have to wait. Like, you know, if you've been following my Instagram, this was the time that I was buying more Ethereum, more Bitcoin in my super fund, my retirement fund, and I waited a year. And now you can see that it's worth about 350 grand Aussie dollars from the 26,000 Aussie dollars. That's that's what you got to do. That's part of the game. I've talked about other reasons why I think this might be a little bit bearish compared to previous moves. I'll leave that and you can check out the other videos because we've got a lot to get through today. Now onto the NFTs and money laundering, looking at taxes. This is one way that people are using NFTs to, I don't want to say avoid taxes, more like minimize their taxes. However, the authorities are probably going to call it avoiding taxes. In fact, they will call it avoiding a taxes, which is illegal. Now, this is another space which is becoming easier to use and easier to launder money. And in terms of art, I think this video is a fantastic video to watch here. It's from Economics Explained, the economics of the art market, why this painting isn't worth 450 million. It's an easy way to move money around the globe. And now, especially with the digital art, it makes it even easier. And you don't have to go through ports and different areas to store the art and pay fees to store the art and then get recorded at different ports of where you're putting this art. It's just a hell of a lot easier for people to do. Now, the problem I see here isn't the fact that people can launder money with NFTs. The problem I see is governments not keeping up with the digital space. They are very slow to move because they're very big bodies. It takes a lot of work to get anything done. And so they're not going to keep up with the digital space, or at least that's my view of what's going to happen in the future. And so they'll start to whack on just it's illegal until they can figure something out. Now, it's not that I don't want to see people help and provide for society. And that comes in the form of some sort of giving back. And people would probably call that taxes. The way I see it being done in a more legitimate and sustainable way is to tax the land. And I've got a couple of pieces on that in just a moment. So this is one of the problems that governments are going to face right around the world. If they rely on taxing their citizens and using that as a form to generate income for the government. Now I'm bringing this up in a small crypto news video because I think we need to start thinking about this moving forward. Skip ahead if you don't want to hear about my thoughts on this. There's plenty of more news coming up, but I'll keep it quick. Essentially, I think we need to start taxing the land of where we are. And this is an idea that I've had mentioned to me by Phil Anderson. You can check out the idea here. It's a free ebook, Your Citizen's Dividend. I'm getting no kickbacks from this. It's a free ebook. It's a fantastic little read to get a bit of different idea of how our system can work. Now, if we're in the space of cryptocurrency, we're looking at decentralizing our money. I think it's important to start figuring out or start learning about different ways that we can run societies and allow us to have our time back and our money back. I think it's a fantastic read. If we start taxing the land, that's going to incentivize us to do better on the land that we're in rather than using land as a stock and using it to store value and not being productive with the land, which is what we do now, especially in Australia. We can have international investors buy apartments, buy pieces of land, and they can just sit there and hold that land until the markets go up and it's unproductive. Now, I wanted to share that with you because I think it's important to get a broader idea of what it is we're doing in the market space, uh, finances, investing, obviously cryptocurrency, because at the end of the day, we need to have a bigger goal or a bigger idea of what's going on out there. And just to show you in terms of the land, how big is the world's land value? The total value of all property in the world is $217 trillion, 2.7 times the world's GDP. Now, this is obviously going to be a wildly estimated number, but it's extremely high. And so the value that we can produce from the land, I believe we could probably pay for a lot of things rather than taxing our individual income. And that's our time at the end of the day. So if you have an interest in not repeating the same issues of the past, and this is just governments being so slow in the way they are collecting revenue, and it's just not efficient anymore. You've got an interest in taxes and how we can better govern our society more efficiently. I suggest downloading this ebook. I'll leave a link to it in the description. As I said, I get no kickbacks from this. It's 100% free. 
it's just worth a read. Whether you take the ideas on or not, it just may expand your thoughts on investing and basically governing in general. Let's get back to some of the crypto news. Now onto governments doing what governments do best, and that is restricting their citizens. Iran warns crypto investors amid ban on Bitcoin mined outside of its borders. It is trying to turn Bitcoin into a non-fungible token. The central bank of Iran has reminded investors that only cryptocurrencies minted by a licensed miner in the Islamic Republic can be used under limited circumstances. Traders will bear full responsibility for the risks if they are using crypto, Bitcoin, anything outside of being mined in Iran. That is changing the use of what cryptocurrency is. And they're trying to make it a non-fungible token, trying to say that there is a difference between a Bitcoin mined in Iran that is different to being mined across the border in another country. It's complete nonsense that governments are now trying to put this sort of regulation on us, especially in the digital space. That's why I continue to bring it up just in small pieces. And I'm sure it doesn't interest a lot of people, but with your newfound wealth, really got to be aware of what the governments are doing to restrict us or take that away from us. Now, the next pieces of news are ideas or they're developing a theory in my mind that we could be seeing a bit of an extreme frothy peak and we might be seeing it now. We might be seeing it in a few weeks. This is City looking at accumulating interest in Bitcoin very rapidly. It contemplates launching crypto services. Citigroup is reportedly seeing a very rapid accumulation of interest in Bitcoin across a broad spectrum of clients, including large asset managers. Now, who is left after these big companies get into cryptocurrency. What is left? It looks like the retailers looking at getting in, it looks like the large asset managers are getting in. Who is left to be buying it after the mainstream of the mainstream are getting in? This is how cycles work. And if we see the largest of the large coming in late, who's left? Tell me down below who is left to continue buying the bags after everyone is in. That's generally what leads to a market peak and then a subsequent dip or major crash until we get the reaccumulation and the move again. So that is just some signals that I'm looking out for. Goldman Sachs formally establishes cryptocurrency trading team. So now Goldman Sachs is officially announcing it as I see here. New York based investment bank officially acknowledges its involvement in crypto trading. Is this the final stages of one section of the crypto market? I'm just paying attention to them. I'm being more cautious than I would be back in 2020. That is a definite thing that I'm doing. If I see a bigger dip, my view is overall, we still got a little or a long way to go. So therefore, I'd be happier seeing a dip now, especially with all of the interest in the market at the moment. Speaking of irrational prices and craziness going on, Ethereum Classics continue to go up. There's just a few more articles on this. Ethereum Classic is not like Ethereum. Take a look at the path to alt season. First, the money flows into Bitcoin and Ethereum, and then it flows out into the large caps, and then finally into the meme coins, and everyone's excited into some of the low, uh, the lower caps, some of the mid caps, some of the caps that really don't do anything like Ethereum Classic, and all of these things pump, and then we kind of, basically, repeat the cycle again and again and again until we don't, and we move into a bear market. And so I'm definitely seeing a lot of this. We're, this article from uh, Secrets of Crypto has put out this post is thinking we're going to phase three. Ethereum has been outperforming Bitcoin and large caps are going parabolic. Agreed. But I'm also seeing the memes and the large caps outperforming. We've got Ethereum Classic for freak's sake. Like that's a nonsense coin. Uh, and obviously the memes is a Dogecoin. So I think we're kind of in this phase four, maybe between the two. But we're definitely not in phase one and we're in phase two moving into these two or they're all three are happening at the same time. So that's why things are not exactly the same as previous cycles, but they can rhyme. And I think they're kind of rhyming in this case and just getting a little bit more confusing as the markets evolve. Now onto a hack, and this is Rary. Rary Capital, Capital reports exploit in ETH pool. So $15 million has been taken. Upon that news, Rary governance token dipped around 25, 26%, but it's slightly recovered since, uh, since I started recording the video. So that's something just to take note of. I don't know if they'll completely crash and get destroyed overall, but I'm really just looking at it in terms of news and how this, how it affects the market when something is hacked. I think they'll probably fix it, they'll cap it, they'll, you know, they'll figure it out and the market will recover at some point. But sometimes these can take just a little bit uh, of time for it to circulate the internet. Last thing I want to mention to you guys is thank you very much for getting my Twitter account over 10,000. We're having a fantastic time over there. I don't know about you, but I definitely am. 
this is working ethereum tsunami ben cohen again i do watch his content i like his stuff uh, and it seems to work we post tweet ethereum and it goes up <laughs> obviously it doesn't work for that but you know it's a joke on to eth and we are looking at nearly 10 weeks up remember what we've been following over the last couple of months the market has around these six month moves i'm not sure whether we're going to get six months again after our move from the low at 13 1400 seeing as we are getting very close to about is that 300 percent there's 100 we're 200 percent from that low so we're doing pretty well from our low back in february uh, and march and whether we can go another 14 or so weeks is yet to be decided <laughs> But if we get halfway, then I'm keen to see that get to at least another two or so weeks of our current move. We're on high alert now. The run is well and truly into its final stages. So let's just keep following this as we do with every other chart on the channel. With that said, make sure you like the video, subscribe, bell notification icon. Let me know in the comments down below if you enjoyed that little segment on me just diving into my opinion of stuff that's a little bit controversial or very controversial when it comes to governments, taxes, uh, how we should be running society, you know, from some dude in his apartment doing a YouTube video. Ideas, not saying things are going to change like that, but they're ideas to be explored in my opinion. So let me know in the comments what you thought about that uh, and I may make future videos on it. Thank you once again, guys. You can follow me on Twitter, Instagram, like, share, subscribe the video with someone you think will find value from the video. Uh, links to Swiftex and Blockfolio down below if you want to trade and keep track of your portfolios. But until next time, I'll wrap it up there. Till next time, have more fun to get more done.